Hello, uh, welcome to this webinar uh, with me, Victor Paredes. Uh, it is about what is new in Mojo 14. So before starting, I want to uh, tell you some of the rules of the webinar. So if Maria, you can go to the next one. So the webinar is going to be a more or less one hour uh, long. Everyone will be muted. There will be a Q&A session uh, in the last 15 minutes, so please use the questions uh, box there to share your questions. Uh, there are many things that are not, I won't be able to explain, so please, please use that uh, box. Uh, not every question is going to be answered. I'm sorry about that, but we, we won't have time for that probably. Uh, but anyway, the, this is going to be recorded and we will post it on social media very soon. The panelists today are Mari Quinones and myself. Uh, please share your story. Yes, you can share this stuff on Instagram. So you can use the hashtags uh, Mojo Animation and tag us uh, at Mojo Animation. Uh, if you want to. Yeah, and now we can already start, I guess. So I will share my screen now. Um, can you share my screen, Mario? Can you? All right, show my screen. Perfect. All right. I hope you can see my screen. <laughs> uh, so the first thing I wanted to say is thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the positive feedback we are receiving about Mojo 14. We are we are really, really overwhelmed. Uh, it is very nice to hear your nice comments. It's very nice to hear that people are really enjoying this new version. We worked very hard, uh, not only us, but also the beta team to make everything work, uh, to work as well as possible. Uh, of course, there, there is always room to improve and there are always things to fix. So we're still working on that. But thank you. Thank you very much uh, for all the positive feedback. Thank you also for all the negative feedback, which is not too, there are not too many uh, messages about that, which is great, <laughs> but we are also considering it uh, because it, it, it helps us to improve the software. So thank you. Thank you very, very much for that. This is really like the nicest release we have ever had. And it's, it's a very nice sensation. Thank you very much. All right, so let's start. So the first thing I want to show you is um, actually Mojo 13.5. The previous version of Mojo. Um, so it was everything a lie. I, I won't talk about Mojo 14. So this webinar is about 13.5. Uh, so no, I just I wanted to show you this file. Um, this is uh, the my father's dragon poster. This is not part of the movie. Uh, this is just like a fan art I created with the poster. I worked on this movie, but not on this particular artwork. But I want to show you how this looks on Mojo 13.5. Uh, so you can see here is the vector version of this poster and I just animated these characters walking there and here is the bitmap at the left uh, at the left and I want to show you how the same file looks on Moho 13. Sorry on Moho 14. So this is Moho 14 and you can see the file here uh, You can see all the gradients and the blending modes and you can see it. I hope you can see it It's working much much better. It looks great uh, and this is because we updated our graphics engine. We are using a totally new graphics engine, and this allows us to show stuff on the screen in a smoother way, showing more effects, just showing uh, the blending mode, so showing many things. So if you use Moho in the past, I think you are going to be very happy to use this. It's, it really feels like a different software in a way. So here you can see, for instance, these characters. Uh, here is Elmer walking there, and you can see it's just a, rig, a normal rig character. And the same for the dragon here. You can see it walking here. And there are many new things happening here. First, if I open this character and I go to the shine here, you can see I have this circle here. And this is actually, it's a bit uh, light, but it's a, a little bit of a shine here. Um, and actually I can change that. I can open the layer properties of this and maybe can modify the blur. So you can see it's just a white circle, but it has some blur and it also has some blending mode. So I can change all these blending modes in real time and I can see them 
on real time. So it's very nice to work that, that way. So you can see here, there is also a bigger shine here that affects only the head of this character. So you can see it here. So we can play and we can rig all this. These are just normal uh, vector shapes and you can just play with them and everything looks nice and it runs very smoothly. Uh, if for any reason you this is not working well for you uh, or you need to improve the performance, we have some buttons here. With this one, you can uh, hide all the shape effects. With this one, you can hide all the layer effects. Here you can see every layer without any effects applied. And here you can hide the masking. So now you can see the masking is not working. And with this button, you can hide the brushes. So you can see how the brushes are not working there here. So if you, if you really want to see like a very ugly version of this, you can deactivate all this. And let me just activate everything again. So you can see everything working here. Um, this file also uses a new feature. I will talk, I will talk to you about this feature, but um, this is using liquid shapes. If you have seen the video tutorials or maybe you have played with the demo or you are already upgraded uh, to Moho 14, you can see that this is using liquid shapes and actually have this main shape and this all these stripes are actually being clipped inside of this shape. So this character is very simple. You don't need to create a very complex masking for it. You just uh, can create all that in a single layer. So we can have more powerful characters now uh, with simpler with simpler layer, with less layers. Um, let me just open this now. Um, here is another example of the of the new graphics engine working. So you can see here, I I, I wanted to create some kind of energy ball, um, and here you can see it is moving. Uh, this again, it, this is actually very simple. It's just let me just hide some of the shapes. I have this shape at the bottom, and this shape has some some weird shapes moving from one side to the other and it has some blending mode. So when I move all this, I hope this is visible for you. Maybe, uh, I don't know how how in real time you will be able to see this, but basically I have some shapes moving here and rotating and then I have another layer here with other shapes with different blending modes. Uh, but you can see they are all like very, very simple, like wavy shapes that are moving here. So if I activate everything here, and see all this working and all these blending modes working together. And actually I can take this layer and I can copy this layer. I can go back to the to the poster here and I can simply paste this layer. And let's say now we want to put this energy ball here. Uh, so now he will be touching that. So now the energy ball is interacting with the rest of the character and you can see how the blending mode is working over the characters here. Let's move it. Yeah, like that. So you can play with all this. Um, and it really, really feels like you can you can apply every effect, uh, on, not every effect, but most of the effects. There are some effects. Some of you have noticed that a few effects are not supported by the new graphics engine. Uh, that is a limitation it has. So especially like all the effects coming from Moho, like especially shape effects, some of them are, are not supported, but most of them are. So I can even go to the group vector layer and maybe, I don't know, apply an outline. So now I can see this outline working on real time for the character too. Uh, you could apply a, a shadow, some shading, like there are many things you, that you can apply here on real time. Something that of course it wasn't possible on the previous version of, of Moho 13.5. And here I'm actually using the the demo of 13.5 because uh, I just installed this version of the software just to show you this. So I didn't have time to put my serial number here. So I'm using the demo, uh, but I have my own serial number, of course. Um, so let me show you here um, another example. And I want to show you some of the liquid shapes. And Actually, no, sorry, before the liquid shape, I want to show you a little example here. It's just a lightsaber I was testing. So 
here you can see all the blending modes again applied and it has some dynamics so all this shine is actually moving uh, in real time and I just animated the the lightsaber like moving and rotating but everything else is done automatically here so you can see this working here so this is the kind of stuff you couldn't do before having like this quality of preview all right now um if you haven't watched the the tutorial that we have on our youtube channel about um about liquid shapes i really recommend you to check it um now i'm opening an, a, a file that is a bit heavy so it will take a little bit to load and actually okay here it is yes so I have this river here and I was just want to show you some concepts about liquid shape so let me show you first very quickly in a new layer actually uh, what is a liquid shape if you haven't seen that tutorial liquid shapes are actually just shapes that you can combine in different ways so for instance I have these two circles and I can select the second one and I can combine the second one with the first. So now you can see I have a shape that is combined with this one. So you can see they share the same outline there. Uh, I have also an option to blend this. So now you can see it, it acquired like this liquid sensation of combination here. And I can also subtract instead of add. So now it feels like it is pushing, like one of the shapes is pushing the other one like that. And you can also intersect or clip these shapes. So let me just change the color here. So now it works a little bit like masking. Uh, it is not exactly masking. There are some limitations about this. Like for instance, the, the line width of the second shape uh, cannot be thicker than the first shape because you will get this uh, thicker line here. Um, this happens because of the way these shapes are created. So you need to consider that, but if this shape is not thicker than the other one, then you should be fine. If you really need this shape to be thicker, then uh, it will be better to use masking in this case, or actually something that you could do too, is to create a second shape that is also uh, thin, but maybe you have two shapes here, and now you have this, instead of having a stroke, you have this thicker. So you have a solution for that. It's just an extra shape here anyway let me go back to the actually remove this layer so if you want a more detailed <laughs> tutorial about liquid shape shapes you can you can check that tutorial on youtube but here we have this river and i want to show you some ideas about this river so let's go to this um la layer at the bottom here you can see first you can see that the gradient here is being shown in real time so I can animate this you can see how the gradient is moving here so it is visible in the past gradients normally they weren't visible on the canvas so now it's different now that is different uh, and you can see this wavy movement happening here and actually what is happening is that I have this circle here and this circle is subtracting from this shape so I have a rectangle, I have a circle that is subtracting from that rectangle. And then I have this rectangle here. And this, rest this rectangle is actually adding uh, to the shape. So if I move both together, it looks like a little bit like a carpet moving. So you can create this kind of wave movement. So what I did here is that I have a cycle of this movement. If I select this circle, for instance, you can see here is the cycle. So is this circle going down and then going back up? So that is moving in a loop. So there are several shapes here moving in a loop, generating that wavy movement. So I can go to other layers here. So for instance, this layer is interesting too. Let me isolate this. You can see in this one, um, actually, let me just move these two shapes down. I just want to show you these shapes here too. Uh, first so here you can see that there are actually a few ovals that go down and they are subtracting from the shape so if I move them from bottom to top you can see how they are subtracting so now they have a cycle so they go down and then with the cycle they go up again and they go down so they jump up and then they then go down so that is how this is working here so you can see every single shape 
has its own cycle. Uh, to set up these cycles is actually very easy. Um, so you just need to select the circle and, and tell the software, okay, you want a cycle and, and here you can change the, the timing of that cycle. So for instance, this one is starting, the one for this shape is starting here and ending here and then it's starting, starting again, but I can just select these keyframes and move it wherever I want it to start uh, in a different position. So you can also adjust all that. So normally what I do here is that I create all the cycles at the same time. So I have like several circles here. Let's say there are several circles. I just move them down all together and create the cycle and then I start selecting one, one circle and changing the position of its particular cycle. Uh, I mean the, the position on the timeline. And then you can get this kind of effect. Now, uh, these other shapes that are here, these are very simple shape. I, I actually, I just draw something like this and, and put it, uh, put a fill on it. But they are very simple shapes and they travel. Again, they have a circle and they are traveling from left to right. So my idea here was to give some, uh, kind of the feeling that this is uneven. So, you know, it, it won't end like in a, in a straight line. So that is what this is doing. So you can see the cycle here. I think I broke it already, but uh, there you can see it working. So you can create this kind of stuff. I have more layers here. Let me just activate all that. I have some particles for the shine. This is a very simple, this is not a perfect example. It's just a test uh, I created to like to think about how to use the liquid shapes uh, in different uh, places, but of course you can design a better one here. Uh, another idea that you can take is that, for instance, here, I have, I just created this shape. You can see this shape is just, I just did something like this and painted that. Actually, what I did is I selected, I used the, used the freehand tool with auto fill. So I just did something like this. It's very, it's not very fancy, but I did something like that. And now I have other shapes that are subtracting from it. So you can see when I move this one, this one is subtracting from it. So you can see something funny is happening there with all the shapes. And then I have another one that is also subtracting, this one at the bottom, okay? So basically now I have this animation. I was thinking of, about having like the effect of mud or something. I have these two shapes just moving. So the animation here is very simple. It's just these shapes like basically going up. Uh, there are a few keyframes here of vector animation, but this is just that. Again, this is very simple stuff. You can do something better or you can, I don't know, apply, apply some blur or some different effects to whatever you want, uh, blending mode or anything. So you can get something. Uh, a little bit more uh, like fancier, um, but or change the speed. Maybe you want everything to be slower, so you can just select all the keyframes here and make it slower. I don't know if this is going to work well, but now it is moving way slower. So you can play with that. So normally in the tutorials, I just show circles <laughs> because it's it's a very good shape to show some examples, but you can use whatever shape you want. Um, actually, if you, I will show you this. We, we have been showing this one several times, but I will show you this just one more time. Uh, this is the dragon from uh, the cover of the software. So here we have with some meshes and here you can see the fire is actually done with liquid shapes. So let me just hide some of the, some of the shapes here. And actually, let me like this one too. So here you can see that this fire has these shapes that are subtracting here. And they are not only subtracting, they are also rotating. So they are rigged with bones. So since these are just normal vector layers, you can also rig them with bones. You can create a smart bones for them or whatever you want. So here, all the movement is actually done with bones and liquid shapes. Uh, and here I have some shapes that are subtracting. So for instance, this star is subtracting from the shape, but I have other shapes like this spiral here. This one is adding. So when I move this here, you can see it, this one is adding to the shape. I hope you can see it. 
So you can combine different shapes and different methods all together and you can have different blending modes too. So, so here is the fire working there. And you can see it has some pin bones that are rotating the shapes, but everything is very simple. And actually when the dragon is like breathing, starting to breathe the fire, it's actually the layer of the fire is just very small. It's very small here. You can see the, the rectangle here. This is a very small layer and it grows to get to that position. So I didn't like animate that too much for giving that effect that the, the fire is starting. It's just this shape, like this entire layer growing. And then I have the, let me see where I have that. I don't even remember where I have that shape, but I have this, let me try to select this one. Um, yeah, I think it's, well, I don't find it, but I promise you there is another layer somewhere. Ah, it's this one. Okay, I found it. <laughs> Super. So this layer is just a little rectangle that um, has a small animation. So you can see it starts as a little circle just to give the idea of, uh, of the fire starting to grow there and then it becomes a bigger rectangle there. So this is all like point animation with bones, all very simple. Uh, but liquid shapes are, are very powerful and they are not only powerful for um, fire or liquids or different effects. Um, you can also create characters with them. Um, a few days ago, I, I saw a tutorial. I watched a tutorial. I don't remember the, the name of the guy who created the tutorial, but he made a, a very nice example. It's very simple, so don't expect too much, but he just made a, a little rectangle and then created a circle for the mouth and then just set this to be, to subtract. So then you, he was showing like, okay, I can rotate now the character just by moving the mouth. So I can have the mouth on, on, on the front view and then on profile. And then he created uh, a couple eyes here. I know this is a great example, but I, I just, uh, he just selected clip here. So the, now these two shapes, are actually clipping. So now if I move all this shape together, I can see, you can see that it is simulating a rotation. And finally, what he did is he created another shape here for the nose, but just gave it uh, add here. So now if he moved all these shapes, now you can see the profile appeared with the nose. So again, this is <laughs> it's like a silly, uh, example but you can see that it can be very powerful and you can just set up that and if you want to simulate like a, a 3d rotation let's just set up that so i would just i will just go to profile and now um to simulate this is going back i will just put the nose um let's say here and i will move this here and now in the next frame i will just move this here and let's say I move this here. So let me see what I do with the nose. The nose should start appearing around here, let's say, and then come here. So now, yeah, you can simulate a, a 3D rotation using one layer only. Um, again, this is a very ugly example, but it's something that you can do with the, with the liquid shapes. Now, um, another thing that we added um, in, in this version are the, are the Kerbers. And I want to show you an example. Probably you saw the Kerbers now. Actually, let me show you a little example um, that works well. I will just create some kind of uh, tail. So I, just, I will just paint this like this. All right, and now I will select this layer and I will go to draw and create a curve layer and this is going to create this line here and i can just adapt the line to the to the shape here and now i can use the line width uh, tool which is here to increase the size of this blue rectangle so the idea is that this blue rectangle should cover the entire shape 
okay this is how Kerber's work so this is like the the influence of the of the Kerber okay this blue rectangle so the, let's say I'm happy with that and now I can animate this all right and I can move this so now I have this animation and even if I don't I mean let's say I'm happy with this curve but I don't like how some of the points are working um, I can still go to the vector layer and just adjust the vector layer to work in any way I want so I can change the line width um, I can change the position of the points the curvature everything so even if the animation of the curve is already done I still have access to that um, so now this is something that is working very well on on Moho 14 and to to show you how better it works I want to show you how it used to work on not the curver itself but for instance when you when you created a mesh layer and you wanted to animate a point in that mesh layer uh, you will get some very weird stuff so in order to show you that I want to open another file I have somewhere uh, give me just one second to find it it is here okay I have this file all right so this is a face right you can see the face here and this face is following this mesh you see I have this mesh here and basically what I have is that let me just mute the animation of the of the mesh first I just move the face from one side to the other all right so in Moho 13.5 if you had a mesh and you animated the mesh so in this case I'm just animating the points of the mesh you can see how it was distorting or it is distorting the the head while it moves okay so you can get this kind of effect which which is very nice uh, and there are some advantages there are some people that like to create this kind of effect but the problem about this and this is how it used to work is that now if I wanted to animate the face itself so let's say I want to I don't know modify the mouth or no modify this uh, circle let me see or this point yeah I think sorry I'm not able to show you what the problem was <laughs> uh, I will use the magnet tool just to show you the issue you can see how some points are jumping from one position to the other uh, like that okay this is working better I'm so happy the problem is it's happening here okay here for instance if I wanted to move the circle here you can see when I move the mouse the point was jumping from one side to the other okay so it was very difficult and probably you have found this issue before it, it is very difficult to move a point and to get it in the position you want so in in Moho 14 what we have is that you can create this kind of animation so you can create this but we also have the option here if I open the mesh layer and I go to vectors uh, here it is uh, the from the de frame dependent warping is working so this means for instance uh, that this point if you look, look at this point here on frame zero this point is, is affected by this triangle of the mesh all right now if this point changes its position now at this uh, frame now it is affected by this triangle okay so that is what makes this point point to jump when I move it too much for instance there because it is moving to a different triangle so it's jumping it's adapting to the to a different thing I don't know how how well it looks in the webinar itself because I don't know how many frames per second you can see there but this is jumping like crazy so what we have now is that every time you create a mesh and this applies to the curvers too this frame dependent option is off so now if a point is controlled by this triangle on frame zero is going to be controlled by the same triangle in every single frame so I can move it and now it is not jumping at all so if I go back to this tail actually so you can see in this tail it was very easy to move all the points and this is very easy because this new option we have here is off 
okay? You can see the frame dependent warping is off and this is going to be off by default, but if for some reason you want, you want to go to the previous behavior, you can just click on, on this checkbox, hit okay, and now if I move the point, you can see the point is jumping like crazy. I hope you can see that. <laughs> but this is something I didn't mention on the tutorials, but it, it is very important. Basically what it means, if you don't need this mode, if you don't find any utility for this, uh, you don't need to use it, but th there are some utilities there. But basically meshes and curvers are working way, way better on Moho 14 um, compared to Moho 13.5. Now, I want to show you something else about Kerbers, and this is, again, please check the tutorials because I, I went very deeply in the tutorials, and here I'm, I'm going very quickly, just trying to show you as many things as possible, and especially things that I didn't show uh, during the tutorials. So here I just have this image of a face, and you can create a Kerber for this image. So I, I will just create a compressible Kerber layer. And normally you could create, let's say, you create this, and now you have one Kerber and you can modify this image with that Kerber. You can change the line with it if you want, so you can make it thinner or thicker, okay? But that is one way to work uh, with Kerber layers. Another way, I will just remove it and start again. I can go to draw, create a compressible Kerber layer again, and now I will take this Kerber and I will add a point and actually I will adapt this to cover only the mouth. So let's say I'm happy with that. And now I will create a new line, this time for the nose. So now I'm just creating a new line for the nose. And now I will create a new line for the eyes, one of the eyes. So I'm just trying to be sure that this covers only the eye. And now another one for the eyebrow. So maybe something like this. I'm trying to cover only the pixels of the eyebrow. And now I will copy and paste these lines to have the other eyebrow done here. So I can do this like that. And now if I go to any frame different than zero, I can animate the mouth, okay? I can animate the nose. Again, I can change the line with the curvature or the position of the points. And I can move also the eyes so I can make them bigger or smaller like that. And of course, I can animate the eyebrows. So I can just animate that. So basically what I wanted to show you is that you can uh, add several curvers in to modify uh, one or more layers. So you don't need to have one layer, like one curver per each layer. You can have as many curvers as, as you want, all right? Um, let me just go to another file here. And now I want to show you another option for the liquid shapes, actually. So let's go back to the liquid shapes. Uh, I'd like to show this one because this car is actually drawn in only one layer. Uh, and you can see it here. So this is a vector layer and everything here is, do is done in, into that single layer. Uh, but there is something special here. For instance, the holes of the wheels you can see they are actually liquid shapes that I can move. So you can see the shape change here. So maybe let's say um, I can select all the wheels. I mean, I can select everything but the wheels and I can move the entire car. And you can see that the hole appears only when the car goes down. So you can create like some funny bouncing there just by having that. Uh, so that is using liquid shapes too. Uh, the same, the same for this darker color. This darker color is being clipped inside of this shape. So now I can move it outside. I can change that. The same for this window. This window is being clipped. I mean, the 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 glass is inside of the window here. So you can see again, it works like masking, but it's not exactly masking. The same for all these. So it is kind of masked inside of the shape. Uh, so you can have a very complex character or car or whatever you want. And everything can be uh, created in one layer. So one of the advantages of that is that if you want to animate this car later, you, you only have to deal with one layer. You don't have to navigate between 
dozens of layers. So that can be very cool if you use liquid shapes. So again, uh, some of the shapes are adding, some of the shapes, shapes are subtracting. You, you have different combinations. In this case, I'm also using uh, brushes. So you can see the brush moving here on the, like the texture of the line. And, and I am using a, a smart bone to simulate the rotation. It's not, it's not a good rotation. It's not very accurate, but it works for the test, I think. Um, now, uh, another thing I want to show you, and actually for this, I'm going to use one of the examples that Cass created, Cass and his team. You know, uh, you can check his um, YouTube channel because this was part of the inspiration for this new tool. So, you know, and in this, the animations that they create, they love that the line boils. So what they did is they created this smart bone that is actually changing the line width. So every time the character moves, they just move this, this, um, this bone to make the line boil, all right? So if you look at their animations there, they, they move a lot all the time and they have this boiling. So what we have um, in Moho 14 now, I will just use a, a very simple circle just to show you here. Um, if you create a, if you add a brush to your um, to your shape or to your character, you can set a variation amplitude, a size variation, so you can see how the the size of the brush changes across the line, and you can let's say this is what I want. Let's say this is this is what I want, okay? And you can also set a line boil, and this is the smart boil. So in the smart ball, you can set the interval for it. So in this case, it is one. So that means if I press OK, that this line is going to boil in every single frame. You can see, I hope you can see it boiling there. So it's boiling, if I go frame by frame, it is boiling in every frame. Now, if I select this again, I can set the interval. So I can say, OK, let's move it, uh, I don't know, four frames. Uh, on force, so now it's going to move every four frames. So so the boiling is going to be slower, all right? So you have that option also to make the boil slower. But, and this is the, the option that I really like, um, you can set the interval to zero, all right? So when I set the interval to zero, the line is going to boil only when, when this shape is moving. So it can it, you can move the points of the shape, you can move the shape with bones or you can move the shape with um, uh, with a mesh. And But the boiling is only going to happen while this shape is moving. So if I just move it like this, let's say I, I want this to happen. Now you can see in the animation, this is not moving so far. And then when it starts to move, it boils. But then when it, it stops moving, it doesn't boil anymore. So you have that that sensation that someone is redrawing the the character. So you can apply the same to this character. Let me just hide this. So in this case, the boiling is happening every few frames here. I hope you can see it. But now, if I select the this has a lot of layers. This this one has too many layers. All right. I'm sorry about that. Um, but I can select the, in this case, it is using the wet ink um, style. So if I select the wet ink style, actually, no, it's not this one. Let me just try again. So it's using the wash, sorry. If I select this one, I can set the boiling to zero. So that means this character is not going to boil until I move it. So if I move the bones here, so let's say I move this here and I simulate a rotation. So now you can see the character doesn't boil. And then when it rotates, the line boils. It's a bit subtle, but it is happening there. Okay, and here you can see that also the texture inside is boiling. And this is because I just painted, you can see here, there are some crazy lines here. Uh, what I did is it's, I just painted like that, uh, some lines like with the freehand tool. Um, so now these shapes are also boiling there. 
and this is using actually the, a style that is called texture so i can go to the style here go to texture and open this one and i can set the line boil to zero so now the texture here is also going to boil only when the character moves so you can paint your own textures and you can have all the boiling happening only while the character moves so this can be very powerful and it really helps to give the sensation of a um, um a traditionally animated character another thing that we added here uh, let me open actually i wanted to show you this with the kerber i'm sorry i'm showing too many things i want to show you too many things i'm trying to get uh I, i'm trying to get every every file here to show you different examples but here i have an example let me just hide some of the shapes um normally if you animate this kind of arm with bones it doesn't work very well you can adjust the the position of the bones the strength but usually you get like this kind of bad bending happening there and the same if i if i bend the hand so usually you solve this modifying the the strength or or creating a mesh and maybe creating a smart bone but actually something that you can do and i have it here is that you can create a kerber so this hand is actually modified by a Kerber. So you can say I have a Kerber here, but this Kerber is being moved by the bones. So now when I move the bones, you can see this character is moving way better and is bending in a nicer way. And I didn't have to do much. I just created a Kerber here. Actually, let me show you from scratch. I just, I'm going to copy this layer. I will create a new file paste this layer into the new file and now I, I will create a compressible Kerber layer put it here here and now I'm going to create the elbow and this part and now I will change the line width so the entire arm is being covered here so let's say something like that so now I just create a bone layer put these two layers inside of the bone layer and now I can create a few bones like that now i can bend this and you can see how now nicely it bends and of course it can be better it's you can still modify some stuff but yeah it's nice i really like it um and this is like an automatic way to create uh better joints now uh what time is it okay another thing about um which is, it can be interesting this is not a very fancy example but here is a here is a sky and it is painted using uh, the watercolor style and this is I don't know how well it looks here but the the boiling is moving every six frames I think so you have this sensation that someone is repainting this but this is actually just a vector layer moving from side to side and everything else is just boiling. Uh, so yeah you can create this kind of stuff so it can work for a background or it can work for texturing your character different things like this and now the final feature i want to show you which is it's sad because there are so many more we also improve the drawing tools the drawing tools are working way way better and the eraser the blob brush the frame by frame layers everything is working very well and actually let me open first a frame by frame layer file. Um, let me. It's just I didn't want to open this one before uh, because I have been showing this file too many times. But I will show you one more time. So here is a frame by frame layer uh, uh, made by Jeff King. Uh, he created this animation. And you can see the animation moving here. And you can create new frames or you can paint over it using the uh, let me just uncheck the auto fill and just use that so yeah you you have um you have much nicer drawing tools especially if you use moho before the drawing tools in 13.5 and previous versions is uh, they are not great and we improved them a lot and we improved also the eraser the blob brush and many other um many other tools i really recommend you to check the tutorials uh we we covered all this very deeply there but i just wanted to show you this um uh, very quickly at least 
And let me just go back to the other five. <laughs> this is uglier, but I want to show you that we have new dynamics here. And I hope you can see this, this uh, car bouncing. And most of the animation here is done automatically by the dy dynamics. So actually the only thing that I animated here are the wheels. I just rotated the wheels like that. And I think I used this bone to move the entire car up and down. And then I used this bone to move it from side to side. So everything else is done automatically by the software. So we have these dynamics uh, for rotation, scale, and position. Again, please check the tutorial. Um, I think that, that one is a, is a nice tutorial, but I can change the values here. For instance, I can increase the, the position value. So now the, the blue part of the, of the car is going to move way more, maybe too much. Um, but yeah, I can, I can break it just by increasing here these values or, or decreasing them. So depending on what I do, you can just get that. So yeah, here you have it. This is much better now. So the dynamics, they are very, very cool. You, you should try it. Um, something interesting um, that I was testing with the dynamics is that during my father's dragon, we had to animate many ropes. Like uh, the dragon was tied with ropes, so we had to animate many ropes. And at least for me, animating ropes is not very easy. Like following the physics of the of the rope can, can be a bit tricky. So now uh, I have this rope here and it's actually animated automatically with this new dynamics. So in this case, this is using the new dynamics plus um, delay constraints, which is another feature I won't have time to talk about. But basically, I just moved this bone. So let's say I will move it here, and then I will move it here, and then it will go up. So let's see what happens there. So if I hit play, I have this other animation. And now you see it behaves a little bit like a like a rope. It's a bit elastic, but you can also change the values to make it more or less elastic. So if I select these three bones here and I hit play, I can change, for instance, if I want them to bounce less, I can just reduce those values. So maybe if I want them to move a bit slower or to feel a bit heavier, I can just set a different weight or set a different damping. So you can play with these values, but if you are creative enough, you can create some very nice stuff here. I just broke this, I think, but it's fun to break things also. Um, let me see if I can show you one more thing. Okay, I have one more minute. Here is a flag, uh, and the flag is following the same principle. Here I have some dynamics working. So I just move the, the um, I don't know the word in English, but only this part of the flag is moving and everything else is reacting to that. Um, so you can simulate this kind of movement too. It's not perfect, but I think it's a nice example at least. Um, and I had another file I wanted to show you. Oh yeah, uh, with the drawing tools. So with the new drawing tools, this is a work, work in progress. Actually, this is the cover for Moho Debut, but I couldn't finish it uh, yet, the, the animation part, but here you can see a work in progress. So here's the, the illustration of uh, Chris Chatterton. Um, by the way, congratulations, Chris Chatterton. The people who knows him, uh, will know why, <laughs> uh, but um, he's a very nice guy. I had the, the luck to, to, to meet him around here. He lives close to my city. Um, so he created this character. I think it was illustrated on Photoshop. And here is the version creating, created with vectors. So this, this is all vectors done in, in Moho. So I can select, for instance, the head. And you can see the head, they have a, they have a brush. And I can animate all this. And even the texture you see here is actually just lines with brushes. So you can recreate all this. And my idea is to get uh, this character as close to the original. Of course, it's not going to be exactly the same, but the idea is to create uh, an entire animation just using vectors and having this final look with it. 
So I think that was the, the last thing I could show you today. So if you have any questions, I will try to answer them. So Mario, are, are you around? Yes, thank you so much, Victor. Uh, I know this is, uh, was a very packed presentation. <laughs> uh, and also we want to thank all of you who joined us live. Um, for example, James from UK, Reni from USA, Sanotar from Dubai, Pierre from France, Mike Clifton is also here, so thank oh, you, Mike. I know that guy, yeah. <laughs> so, thank all of you. Uh, let's go in one question from Joel Mayer. Um, he's really happy about the, um, the new tools, the Frame My Frame animations. He, he's also wondering if there's going to be uh, more updates to the tools in the future. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's always the plan. Um, to be honest, right now we are working on fixing some stuff because, you know, when you release a 0 0.0 version, uh, you try to make everything work as well as possible, but, but there is always people finding some issues or some crashes or stuff. So right now we are working uh, on having 14.1 ready, so fixing things that people could have found. Uh, but after that, yeah, of course. I mean, we want to we want to continue improving every tool, adding new tools. And I am really, really looking forward to know better, like more deeply, what people think about uh, the drawing tools and what they think that could be improved. So maybe in the future we can we can create some some new stuff there to 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 add some improvements or maybe add new tools about that. Uh, so that is like the general plan, but we don't have anything yet. Like I, I cannot say, yes, we are adding this X feature or something. Mm -hmm. And also about adding stuff, there was a mm -hmm. question from, uh, let me check, uh, Brendan, if we are, uh, if these characters, these dragon characters will, will soon or in the future be added to the library. Yes, yeah, that's the plan. That's, uh, probably not in point one, to be honest, <laughs> uh, but but soon. Yeah, the idea is as soon as I have everything ready, we will add it to the to an update uh, in Moho. That, that's the plan. Awesome. And here's a technical question from Pedro. Uh, can you use liquid shapes in conjunction with mask? I hope that makes sense. Yeah, you can. I mean, a, a liquid shape is... I mean, I'm not sure about what uh, Pedro wants to create, but uh, let me just reset this. But let's say uh, I have this liquid shape. It's very beautiful here. There. Uh, I can just group this. And, and let's say I will create another shape here. And actually, let me, I will add a, a blur here. This is going to be a bit weird, but Let's say this, and now I can create a mask and mask inside of the liquid shape. So now this is masked inside of the liquid shape, and you can do it uh, in the other way around. So let's say multiply there. So yeah, you can create that, or you could create um, uh, you could create a, a liquid shape that will be masked by another shape too. Um, actually. There is a, if you check it on the tutorials about liquid shapes, I show a face that I am looking, here it is. So I will open this one. So this shape, this face, you can see it more deeply in the tutorial, but this face is using liquid shapes for the face itself here. So you can see it is combining different things and also mask to it. Uh, here are the eyes, they are masked to the shape. And they are also liquid shapes, so I can modify different things here. And these are all liquid. Um, of course, it's very ugly now. Um, and even the shade here, which is also being masked by the, the head, um, they are liquid shapes. So basically, a liquid shape is a normal vector layer, so you can do whatever you want with it. It can be uh, modified with bones, with meshes, with masking, with anything, really. And that's also another similar, in a similar question, David Pike asked if you can combine liquid shapes with particle system. Um, you, okay. 
Yes, but with a limitation. I mean, I can have, um, let's say, I can have a liquid shape here. And I can put this liquid shape inside of a particle layer. Um, so this liquid shape is going to be reproduced by the particle layer, but you cannot mix one particle with another particle, if that makes sense. Liquid shapes, they only work inside of the same layer. In the case of the particle, what it, it is doing is like duplicating that layer several times. So, so yeah, you can do it, but um, uh, not in, in every single way. There are, there are some limitations there. Mm -hmm. Another question from Limbo Limbo. Do the new masking options work the same for bit that images or only vectors? They work for images. Uh, since we, we changed the, the graphics engine, we had to change the way masks work. Um, so now the software, when, when you work with images, what the software does is that internally it traces the image. Uh, so it traces like the, the border of the image. So let's suppose this is a, an image. So sorry, let me just create a vector layer here. So what the software will do is to trace the image like this, and it will create a, a mask based on that trace. So that means that you have more accurate um, faster masking for images, but also if your image has some alpha or, or some texture on the border or something like that, probably you will miss some details. But this is a concession we had to do in order to have the, the masking working better for images. Uh, and there are some concessions we had to do also for the masking in vector layers. But in general, if you try the masking system, it works way, way better than it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, one question from Bogdan, if you can just show quickly again about how you control the arm with bones and align the new curver. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Um, let me just find where is that file. I, I always, during these webinars, I always made the mistake of opening too many files. And, and then I am always uh, like afraid that the software will crash because <laughs> I am being too responsible. Um, okay, here it is. So yeah, it's it's very simple. I, I will, again, I will copy this layer. Uh, this is the image layer. So I will copy it and I will create a new file and paste the layer. So basically this is just an image, a normal image. And now I can go to draw and create a compressible curver for this. So what this will do is to create a new vector layer with this line, okay? And now I am always on frame zero when I am set, uh, setting this up. So now I just move this to be in the two extremes of the arm. And now um, I just add points over the joints and then I can change the curvature. So maybe I want less curvature over the elbow and maybe less curvature over here. And now I change the line width here because I need the entire arm to be covered by this blue shape. So this is how this works. And now once I am done, I can go to any frame and I can modify this. And this is going to curve and modify the arm, but I can also remove that animation, go back to frame zero and I can create a bone layer. And if I put the curver inside of the bone layer and also the image inside of the bone layer, I can add some bones here. And what will happen is that the bones are going to move the curver and the curver is going to move the, the, the arm. So that is why I get like a nicer effect for the, for the elbow. Not so nice in this case, but you can get, uh, it, it will depend on the curvature you define there, I think it will go, work better. It will depend on the curvature you define at the beginning. But that is how you create it. So creating this kind of joints now, it's very, very simple. I'm very happy with this because it's like, it's something that we didn't think about it when we implemented the, the feature, but now it works. <laughs> so it's cool. And I think with that question, because our time is limited, we can wrap up this webinar. Uh, but before we go, if you want to add some last final words, Victor. Uh, 
Yeah, no, thank you again. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying to read in the while I talk and try to read the, the comments here. I see the they're very <laughs> thank you very much for that. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. I'm sorry it was like very fast with many, many things, but I really, really recommend you uh, recommend to you check the YouTube channel, check the new, new tutorials. If you are new to Moho, please check the the course we did with with uh, Chad Trough Gruber. Uh, I think it's very cool and it's, it's a very simple way to start animating with Moho. So please check that. So with that, thank you so much, Victor. Thank all of you who joined us live. And um, as Victor you. said, uh, please check our YouTube channel. You will find all the new Moho 14 tutorials and uh, an amazing uh, 38, I think, 37, um, full tutorial of Moho from beginner to expert by chat. Follow us on social media. And also, because many of you uh, were suggesting new tools, ideas, uh, please join our official community communities at our Discord, who has already over a thousand members. So thank you, all of you. Uh, our developers are always uh, watching your suggestions uh, and also our forum. Uh, both at lostmarble.com forward slash discord or forum. So with that, thank you so much, Victor. Thank you. And thank all of you. So we hope to see you next time. Stay tuned. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.